All right, what is going on, you guys? This is Kevin, Full Metal Ginger, and yeah, man, got a whole other stack of death metal to talk about today. Uh, I think most of this is uh, 2020 releases. Uh, there may be one or two uh, from last year, or the year before, that I've just not gotten around to talking about till now. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, some pretty new material. Uh, there's a couple in here you've probably heard, of, you know, a hundred times from other YouTubers talking about them, but for good reason. I mean, this is some really good material, and uh, just. Yeah, I don't really like to jump on the same bandwagon that everyone else is, but it's kind of like a, a catch-22. It's like either do that or by the time you finally get around to talk about it, everyone's sick of it already. So, yeah, it's just one of those things, I guess. Uh, I've also got some, you know, I don't know, fairly underground material to talk about. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you'll find something cool you like. Uh, I'll leave links below, like always. Uh, check it out or not. It's whatever. Um, yeah, and uh, I've also got a... A stack of uh, King Diamond reissues that came in fairly recently over the last, I don't know, month or two that I've been really wanting to talk about, honestly. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know how much I bitched about those when they came in, uh, just the quality of it. I was kind of disappointed. It wasn't really what I was expecting. Uh, but yeah, I've simmered down. It's not that big a deal, and uh, we'll talk about that when we get to it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll find something cool in here. All right, so our soundtrack today is Hyperdontia, Nexus of Teeth, um, one of my favorites from uh, 2018, really, really good death metal, um, and I was kind of going back and looking at it, it's like, man, I hadn't listened to this in a while, maybe since like January of this year, so it's, it's been a good minute since I've listened to this album, and uh, kind of sad, really, because they've been putting out some killer EPs, man, all kinds of stuff that's came out since this album's dropped, and I haven't gotten around to picking up any of it. Uh, I will eventually, but you know how it goes, you know, you've only got so much money to put in so many places. So you get to it when you get to it, but yeah, if you haven't heard of Hyperdontia for some reason, definitely go look into them. Really, really good material. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll start with this one. Um, and I know I say this on every video anymore, it seems like, but, uh, but it seems like every time I do, something else comes in that it gets me really, really excited, so... Once again, uh, some of my favorite material to be put out this year. Uh, this is a brand new demo. That's not brand new. It's been out a month or so, I guess. Maybe a little longer. Um, yeah, it's just amazing material, I think. I mean, hopefully you guys will feel the same. This is uh, Coagulate with the Art of Cryptosis. Uh, Minneapolis death metal. Um, really elaborate kind of songwriting stuff going on here. Um, I want to say they originally put this out independently, and then uh, Rotted Life came back and uh, put out the cassette versions. And as far as I know, you can only get this on cassette or the digital copy, so hopefully you can find a copy of this. Um, the original one sold out very, very quickly. Uh, I had it you know, saved in my want list, and I went back to get it, and I just missed out on it somehow. And uh, recently they put out the second pressing, and I was like, yeah, I am fucking getting that. So. I think the uh, red shell tells you it's a second pressing, but cool enough. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool to have limited things, but the uh, second pressing is limited to 100 copies, so uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, talk about this. What can we say? Um, like I was saying, it's pretty elaborate stuff. I want to compare it to maybe like Undergang, which I know is not how you pronounce the band, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, where it's just like ridiculously bass heavy, uh, extremely well written, just, you know really fucking uh, sadistic shit basically um, what I found really interested in it it's like a the songwriting and the structure overall and uh, for this being their first demo I mean it's like they're not holding anything back they're going for the fucking kill right now and uh, really looking forward to whatever else they're going to come out with because this stuff's pretty fucking amazing um, let me show you the J card real quick uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just an assortment of odd riffs, really. They kind of, like, take a riff that's not really a traditional kind of death metal riff, but they'll play on it for a while, and it just kind of meanders and drifts, and it sounds, like, really atmospheric, and I guess in a sense it is, but it's still strictly you know, pure heavy death metal. Uh, there's no frills, no messing around with this at all. Uh, but just, it still, it kind of gives off a very eerie and claustrophobic vibe, and it's just a lot going on with this, man. And uh, for only four songs, man, they just pack quite a bit of uh, music into this. So, really, really highly recommend you check this one out. Uh, like, as usual, there'll be links below. And, you know, coming into doing this video, I was like, I'm not sure how I'm going to possibly describe this band. So, hopefully, I at least, you know, 
tickled your fancy a little bit and you might want to go check these guys out but this is some really really cool shit man and uh probably going to be high on my end of the year list and this one's going to be even harder like it always is i mean every year it gets more and more difficult all right so these two i'm sure you're probably sick of people talking about them now but let's just get them knocked out and uh, be done with it uh, but I'm not knocking this music at all because it's fantastic shit. So uh, we have the new EP from Fluids, Ignorance Exalted. Uh, God damn, I mean, you know, if there was ever a band to put Mortician to shame, maybe not to shame, but definitely give them a run for their money in terms of being one of the heaviest bands on the planet. These dudes fucking deliver. Uh, Phoenix Death Metal Band, you're probably all aware of that by now. Ultra heavy, brutal riffs. Um, and this EP is no exception. I mean, if you've heard anything from Fluids at all, this is pretty much what you would expect it to sound like. Um, it's so overly distorted, which I love. You know, some bands do it right, some do it wrong, but these guys definitely do it right. I mean, it's still got the really fuzzy, heavy low end, like you hear on a Mortician album. Uh, and this stuff is all, it's so distorted, it's really kind of hard to hear what's going on a lot. Uh, it's really kind of challenging to kind of figure out where the music's going, but not in a bad way, you know? It's just like, a, really kind of mesmerizing like holy shit they can actually play that that heavy man it's just fucking killer um i'm fairly certain most everything on here is new material i uh, know cat and um chunked have been on shit uh at least one split i know they put them out on a single maybe some other material so um yeah i mean but besides that i'm pretty sure everything's basically new um i'm trying to Really need to change out this jewel case because it's fucking broken. There's a CD and pretty much nothing in the booklet as usual with these guys. But yeah, I mean, uh, I think we've all heard fluids by now. If you haven't, definitely go give them a listen. If you're a Mortician fan whatsoever, you will definitely dig these guys. And uh, I mean, it's kind of sad too because you know they were getting talked about so much there for a while that I kind of held off on showing them my you know what I have so uh I don't know I mean it's really not that big a deal but I just didn't want to you know bore people to death like oh this again uh yeah maybe I'll get to those uh other releases that I have sometime soon I don't know you let me know in the comments if you want to see it if you're not sick and tired of it this one is uh something I bought and it took me a while to listen to for whatever and then once I did I mean it's getting played I don't know, fucking constantly. I've not hardly had it out of the CD player, uh, at least over the last couple weeks. This is the debut full length from Caustic Wound, Death Posture, uh, Death Ground Band out of Seattle, and actually one of Cloud Lindstrom's, Lindstrom, whatever, how did the fuck you say his name? Uh, one of his other projects. Uh, he's already doing Fatted and Cerebral Rot, so yeah, let's just do have another project. Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing, but uh, what really sold me on this is I found out uh, a lot of the dudes from uh, Mortiferum were going to be on this, and I was like, hell yes, yeah, I'm a big fan of those dudes as well, and I uh, need to get some more of their stuff. It's kind of weird, I'm pretty shortchanged on that, um, but if I had to describe it, I mean, the easy description would be to call this like a, almost a more grindy version of Fetid, and I probably shouldn't say that because it's really just the guitar tone talking on this. Um, but I mean, there's also nods to, you know, repulsion and uh, incantation, but it's kind of cool. They do really have their own kind of vibe when it comes to their music. Um, so, you know, in a lot of death grind, it's like, re you know, relentless speed all throughout, uh, not a lot of breaks in there. Uh, but they do take the time to let the music breathe a little bit, let the riffs breathe, kind of settle everything down before they kick it into high gear again, which, you know, I'm not knocking pure speed all throughout. It's just... I don't know, it's a little refreshing to have something just a little different every now and again. Uh, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, you know, I just kind of came off seeing Kyle play, you know, two sets back to back, you know, when I saw Fed and Cerebral Rod. And uh, now he's, oh, let's just do all the vocals on this project. That'll be fine. You know, and I'm sitting here having enough trouble trying to fucking record a video. So, uh, yeah, check this one out if you get time. Cool stuff. I've got my in-laws staying with us, and uh, we've got a raging thunderstorm outside. My daughter is hyper as hell, so this has uh, been a struggle trying to get this video done. All right, I think these next three came from uh, Rotted Life. I don't think they put any of these out. Uh, they just kind of had them in their distro. And, uh, yeah, I was really excited to check them out. And they were, I was uh, very uh, pleased with what I heard. Uh, so this one is a uh, an EP from a... Uh, band out of Guadalajara, Mexico, I believe. Uh, I think this is their debut EP. 
This is Rotting Grave with uh, Horrid Pestilence of Death. Uh, this one actually came out last year. Um, and it's just uh, on those shit. I forgot to say, it came out on Death on or Death in Pieces records. And uh, just furious attack from these dudes all throughout. Man, they don't fucking let up. Uh, lots of slow chugging parts that really accentuate their faster riffy stuff. And uh, really kind of vice versa. So, I mean, they kind of do give you the best of both worlds when it comes to that kind of thing. And they've got a big uh, autopsy influence going on here. Uh, but it's really more in structure than sound. I mean, uh, you know, their tone is so morbid, so oppressively thick. Uh, so, you know, in terms of sound, they kind of, like, take their own thing with what Autopsy kind of already built in the foundation and then just kind of fleshed it out a little more. And that's kind of what I was talking about with Disembowel last time, and I just wish more bands would do that. Like, take influence, sure, but try to take it and put your own spin on it. And I just don't think enough bands are doing that. So, um, yeah, it uh, came with a sticker and uh, this uh, Obi strip, Obi strip, whatever it is. They just were cool enough to throw it in there. I don't know if I showed you this part yet. Uh, yeah, man, great riffs. There's actually a few uh, bass solos in here, which is great because, you know, I I've, I've say it all the time that I wish, you know, bands would have more emphasis on the bass instead of it just being kind of like a backing instrument. Uh, sick vocals, loud kicks, holy shit, not clicky stuff. Uh, but yeah, Mexican death metal at its finest. Um, See, so yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Rod Life still has these available. The, these were limited to 500 copies. Um, there may be other versions out there. I, I know Death in Pieces is this version, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was the original. So, yeah. If you can find other copies of it, definitely go check this one out. This one, uh, honestly, I hadn't heard much about this band, and I basically bought it based on the cover, and this was fucking kick ass shit. This is actually a compilation put out this year of this band's first two demos uh, from Reveler. This is called Revealing the Grotesque. Uh, came out on Macabre Inn Productions sometime this year. And I think these demos were maybe one from 18, one from 19. I really don't remember. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm pretty. They're supposed to be a US death metal band, but they have a couple members from uh, Morbicus on here. And I'm. Um, pretty sure that's a Mexican band, so I don't know if they relocated here or, you know, whatever the fuck. It's not like it really matters, but, yeah, um, a ultra heavy crushing fucking wrist when it comes to this stuff. Uh, the bass is super loud, and, uh, what really kind of gives this a distinctive sound, like I was talking about bass a minute ago, um, the bass on this is really, really loud, but it's got that wet kind of sound to it, so it gives it a ultra heavy crushing, you know, heaviness. Ultra heavy crushing heaviness, eh, yeah, it's whatever. But it also kind of gives it like a wet sloppy sound. So you kind of get like a, just a weird mesh of just killer fucking sounds coming out of this stuff. Um, ah, shit, what was I going to say? No, oh, yeah, it's like basically mid-tempo style death metal. Um, I guess old school, you know, old school style with more of a modern production, basically. Basically what I get from it. Um, and actually... Probably the first demo is what I like the best. Uh, the Scourged Vicious Spews, I think was the name of uh, the first one. Um, and then it kind of gets into the second one, which, which uh, starts with uh, The Hour of Fright. I guess that is the name of both demos. I could pull out the fucking booklet and talk about it. Um, but the best way I can compare this to, and I was really struggling with this one as well, just kind of give you some idea of what it sounds like, but maybe take something like Morgoth and really slow it down and just make it a little bit more heavy and that's basically what you get with these guys um okay yeah so there's the first demo there and uh the second one that basically gives you an idea of what they're about and what they sound like um yeah i mean it's like i was you know i'm probably wrong about that but the best i can come up with is like that more goth description but with ultra gurgly you know deep gutturals you know the kind i'm talking about and this stuff just fucking rips and uh, they actually have a uh, brand new demo out that came out sometime this year. It's available on their uh, Bandcamp page. I need to go check that one out. I need to go pick it up. Uh, but yeah, give these guys a listen while you're there. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, this was a really cool find for sure. All right, and uh, last time I was talking about some incinerator. I figured what the hell, we'll just talk about that split I have. So here it is, uh, split with incinerator and uh, vile apparition. So, uh, 
I was fucking raving about Incinerator last time. And this one, the material on this feels just a little flat. I hate to say it, but it's just it comes off a bit lackluster for me. Um, and especially when you're consider, uh, considering it, when you're comparing it with um, Rotten Flesh Macabre, that EP I have. Uh, I don't know, this stuff just doesn't sound like it really compares. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, maybe it's where I've only listened to it a few times, but I don't know. It just. It didn't. It felt like something was missing. Like that, you know, heavy uh, monstrosity sound wasn't in there in the same kind of way. It just felt like they wrote some stuff and threw it on there. And if they had fleshed it out a little bit more, it could have, you know, maybe came off a little bit better. But you know, it's not to knock the band at all. It's just kind of my first couple impressions with it. But the uh, vile apparition side, holy shit, they fucking killed it, man. They brought their A game. Uh, definitely a uh, straight up uh, furious speed with like a big suffocation influence so that should give you a pretty good idea of what they're doing um and i really meant to check out their uh full length from last year and i just never got around to it i'm kind of bummed about it too uh but this is a really good band so kind of a uh, mishmash and a uh, combination of uh polish and uh australian death metal that's some really good stuff and don't take my you know knock on incinerator as a knock on the band it just felt like this material for this split just didn't hold up to me when I'm listening to Rotten Flesh Macabre. Now, maybe if I had to listen to this first, I would feel different. But uh, I don't know. I just really, really love that EP, and this one just kind of didn't feel the same to me. So, uh, but it's still really good material, and uh, would certainly recommend both of these bands to anybody who's a death metal fan. So, give them a listen. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm definitely interested. All right, so uh, we got some King Diamond to talk about. Now, uh, Metal Blade put these out back in, what was it, May, maybe? And uh, I was, like, pretty excited because, I, I, you know, I've got some stuff on vinyl. i got some stuff on tape, but I didn't have any to be able to listen to it in the car or to put it on my iPod listen to it that way. So it was like, fuck, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get these. And uh, I didn't know at the time that they were CDs that are supposed to be, like, vinyl. And uh, the execution just wasn't there, man. I was kind of, I was pretty disappointed, but... I got over it. Uh, my biggest knock on them now is just they, I have a hard time fitting them on the shelf over here. Uh, but I got the first five albums. So we'll just talk about them briefly. And uh, I'll kind of show you what I'm getting at. So the uh, first one, Fatal Portrait. And uh, what they're trying to do is make a mini uh, LP. So uh, each one of them is a gatefold. And uh, they're almost perfectly square like you would have on a regular record. Um, they did all the CDs like this, where they're kind of a uh, a record print. So, I mean, I get what they're trying to do. I just thought the execution wasn't the best. Uh, but the thing that is kind of neat about them is they each come with a, uh, a folded up uh, inner sheet. So, it's not a booklet at all. It's just they get this inner sheet in each one of them. So, I mean, that's, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, if you can knock it, that's fine. I mean, I'm just glad to have them. And to be able to upload them on my iPod and stuff so I can listen to this shit going to work or something in the morning. But yeah, I mean, you know, they're not that big a deal now that I've had them a while and I've been listening to them. And it's just, like I was saying, the biggest complaint is uh, being on my shelf. But, yeah, uh, talking about the albums in general, uh, Fatal Portrait, not really my favorite. Probably my least favorite of the first five, uh, which is really saying something because this is a fantastic album. Um... I don't know, it's just, um, if I had to complain about one thing, and it's not that big a deal, really, it's just the, di the dynamics aren't there on this album like they would be on subsequent albums. Uh, but, you know, it's the band's first record, so what are you going to really expect? They've not really honed it in yet, um, and they weren't really doing the concepts yet. I mean, there's a bit of a concept on this one, but it's some random songs, too, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about Fatal Portrait. I love Fatal Portrait. I love all these records, but... If I had to pick a least, that's probably the one I'm picking. So going from the least to my absolute favorite, uh, maybe a little overrated. I don't know how you feel about it, but Abigail. Um, it's the first one I heard, so, I mean, I fell in love with it. I was mesmerized by this when I first came across it, and I've loved it ever since, and I can't not love this album. Um, so if you don't know, it's uh, this is the uh, first concept album they did. Um, it's about uh, a couple who inherits a mansion, and... They go to the mansion and uh, scary shit ensues. And uh, a little baby called Abigail might be haunting them. Um, so, yeah. 
They're all like this gatefold. This is probably my favorite art, too. I just love this artwork. And I've been looking for a shirt for a long time of this, and I uh, just haven't gotten around to it. Do I really need to show all these CDs? That's another thing, too. It's kind of a bitch to get out of there. So they're all like this, just like on a black vinyl thing. Uh, let's see if I can pull this inner sheet out. That's like the biggest complaint about it. It's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool that you're trying to make it like a, a record, but these things are so small. It's such a pain in the ass to get out of there. Um, I love this photo, by the way. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't not have Abigail as my number one King Diamond album. It's just it got a lot of nostalgia when it comes to this. So, hell yeah. So the next one is, uh, them. And, uh, when I hear people talking about King Diamond, it's, uh, and I think this is honestly like one of their most popular ones. At least it charted the highest. Um, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about them. It's always like Fatal Portrait or Abigail or Conspiracy or maybe Spider's Lullaby. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good album as well as far as I'm concerned. I think everyone else would agree. And um, so this one is, uh, I always get a kick about this. Like I was getting tattooed one time and uh, my tattoo artist was wanting to play some King Diamond and play them. And we're just sitting there laughing at the grandma and that kind of shit. And, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, so I have fond memories of this one as well. Just kind of not the same as Abigail, but another fantastic album. So I think this one's about, uh, it's a fictional story. I'm, well, I would hope so anyway, where, uh, King is young and, you know, his, uh, grandma comes to live with him coming out of the insane asylum and, uh, weird shit happens. So and that's another thing I love about King Diamond albums, man. They should put these into the novels because these would be great stories to just sit and read. I mean, you can already read them sort of like that, but I don't know. That'd just be kind of a cool thing to have. Maybe like when he's done not doing music anymore, he could put all these out into just like a book form. I just, I would fucking read those in a heartbeat. So, and speaking of conspiracy, we have conspiracy. So this is the follow up to them, both in terms of, uh, album cycles and uh stories so this is a uh, king coming back to the grandma's house or i'm on uh like 18 years later or whatever and just kind of continues that one um in terms of this one this is one of their heavier albums i think um feels a little bit more intense than some of the others uh the guitars sound extra sharp um the overall album has a lot of urgency to it and uh, that's the, another thing too it's like i love how they could keep recording very similar sounding albums but have it a little different here and there. It just gives a totally different feel. And, you know, it's... I hear a lot of bands talking about it. It's like, well, we don't want to do the same thing over and over. It's like, well, take a lesson from King Diamond, man, because they did basically the same thing over and over, but tweaked it just enough to make everything sound completely different than everything else they did. So, you can't knock that. Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to pull out these uh, air sheets anymore. I don't want to rip these things up. They just feel kind of... That's as far as you can really open them. They just feel brittle as fuck, but whatever. And finally, my second favorite album, and uh, does not get enough credit whatsoever, but we have The Eye. Uh, yeah, the creep factor on this one is a big reason why I love this one so much. Uh, the synth work, I feel stronger, and it just feels like a Halloween album. Just something that, you know, when the season comes around, this is what I'm wanting to listen to. And uh, I'm kind of wondering if, you know, Acid Witch might have taken a little bit of influence from this album in particular. Because you can hear a lot of that, especially like in uh, Eye of the Witch. I mean, you can definitely hear some reminiscent stuff in there like you would hear from Acid Witch. So, yeah. Yeah, please don't tear. And, uh, yeah, but uh, great guitar work once again. Songwriting is top notch. This is a flawless album in my opinion. And, uh... Just uh, takes a little bit of a different approach. I'm trying to figure out what I was going to talk about. It takes a different approach in terms of you, where you've got the haunted house stuff. I think pretty much everything, you know, concept wise in the story is pretty much true. Uh, there may be some, like, a little things kind of fabricated and uh, just kind of make it a little bit more creepy. But uh, I think this is all about witch hunts and, you know, like some of the fucked up things the church did back during the uh, French Revolution, or not Revolution, uh, French Inquisition, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, but yeah, I'm fairly certain most of the things in here actually happen. So that's kind of a, a cool way to do this one. And, uh, yeah, really happy to have this one on CD as well. So there that is. All right, so we burned through that a little bit quick. Um, 
next time I think we're going to have some more vinyl to talk about and it's going to be another episode of uh, hey guess what I already own but I had to get the LP version as well so we'll do some of that uh, yeah plenty of CDs to talk about and uh, eventually I want to do like kind of a um, I don't know what you would call it it's like a uh, just a collection of stuff that I have that I haven't shown that I have more than one copy of I guess you'd say something like that um, I don't know I'll kind of explain later when we get to it I guess but uh yeah, so uh, check out all the links below if you want to check these bands out. Really, really good stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram if you want. Uh, subscribe to the channel while you're at it. Send me a like, all that kind of thing. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you next time.